Have you ever tried to walk around with your eyes closed? Maybe some place you've been before, you close your eyes and you just start walking around and you find that you're able to walk around. Well, maybe if you've been there before, maybe you're visualizing your environment and even though you're not taking in information through your eyes uh, right then, you've, you've taken in that information before, so maybe you're able to visualize your surroundings. But if you try this in a place you've never been, you're going to find that you're still able to do it. You're still able to walk around with your eyes closed. So if we look at it from just a sensor perspective, why are you able to do that? Why are you able to walk around with your eyes closed? First, you have, you have the sense of touch, right? And you have the, the sense of balance. And those two things will keep you on track. Maybe, maybe you're using your hearing as well. But I, th I think the big one is your sense of touch. So that's what we're going to build into the DogBot today. Before today, the DogBot did not have the sense of touch. The, the leg bottoms were very rigid. They're, they're like this. They're just made out of plastic. And they don't have a feedback mechanism. They don't have a sense of touch. So I redesigned the leg to have that sense of touch. I also gave it a, a boot that's just a rubber ball. And so now it should be able to grip its environment better, but it should also be able to sense its environment just a little bit more. And the way that I'm doing this is I have two wires, and when pressure is applied, those two wires touch right here and they touch when you apply pressure at an angle like this and they touch when you apply pressure at an angle like this. So I think they're versatile enough for us to install them on the dog bot. But we've, we've got a long ways to go before we can install all of them on the dog bot. We have some testing to do. So I'm sure you remember this if you saw the last episode. We've got a servo plugged into pin 7. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to plug this, the, the bottom part of the leg that we redesigned, we're going to plug it into pin 2. So one of the wires I'm plugging into pin 2. The other wire I'm plugging into 5 volts. Okay. Okay, now that I've plugged it in, I'm going to go over to the computer and write some code. Okay. We're going to open the example from last time. And all I've done uh, since we opened this file in the past is I just took out all the comments and just left the code that we wrote. I, I also took out all the code that had to do with the the LED that we were using last time. So now it's just servo 1 attached to pin 7. So let's save as episode 4. All right. So we have servo 1. We are going to add Let's call it uh, feedback one. And we plugged it into pin two. So this time we're adding input. And now that we've declared it, we should be able to use it down here in the loop. So let's give this a try. Let's save it. Verify it. Save it. And let's upload it. Uh-oh. COM5, already in use. COM5. 
already in use. Ah. That's because it is already in use. We want to use COM4. And let's upload. So what do we get here? Okay, so the light is blinking. That's good. That means it's it just sent our sketch over. This time I'm going to actually pick up the leg before I turn it on. There we go. Okay. So you'll notice that it's, it's got some weird behavior going on. Let's turn it off. And I think, I think the reason we're experiencing the weird behavior is because we got it backwards. So let's switch it around on the, in the code. Let's make this loop position zero. Um, there we go. And let's make this loop position 180, just for readability. Let's try that. Let's verify it. And I got it wrong, so it's a good thing I verified it. And OK, and now let's upload. We're blinking. OK. So let me, let me pick up the leg before we do anything. Let's turn it on. Okay. Let's see if it works. Oh, did it work? I see what's happening. Notice how the lag is, it's reading one or high, it's reading a high state, even though the wires are not touching. And I think the reason we're experiencing this is because we need to add a pull down resistor. So let's turn it off and add that pull down resistor. And this happens a lot. I'll be prototyping and I'll make a really stupid mistake. We need a pull down resistor. It should have been obvious to me from the beginning, but I didn't think about it. So let me go get that pull down resistor. Now what a pull down resistor will do is we'll use like a maybe a 100k uh, ohm, 100k ohm pull down resistor and we will connect pin two to ground through that resistor. And what it will accomplish for us is it will essentially pull down the pin to ground. It'll make it have a low state when we're not applying 5 volts to it. So let's see, we want to apply it to ground. We want to apply pin 2 to ground through a 100k ohm resistor. Okay, let's give it another try. I'm going to grab it and hold it before I apply voltage. <clears throat> Okay. Huh? Huh? Is it working? Let's try to touch the table with it. So we'll notice 
no matter how far away we take the leg, it's going to turn until it reaches the table. So we have it really close here, and it's just going to tap the table. But if we take it away from the table, it's going to go a lot further. Let me hold the board. So let's switch it up really close, really far away. Really close, really far away. Nice. So it definitely works. And all we needed was the pull down resistor. I started thinking when I went to grab the pull down resistor that we may need a capacitor as well to eliminate the noise from uh, radio waves or, or other electric noise that could be in the air. But we didn't. All we needed was a pull down resistor. So give me a second to get set up um, and kind of grab a few more servos so that we can actually make a, a full leg.